We do a short clip on setting up some rules with the Sonoff RF bridge. I got a door sensor here, a water sensor here, and also we'll check out Kevin's trig board. It's the version 7.0 of the trig board. It's a battery powered ESP based sensor board. It's got various GPIO pins exposed on it with a deep sleep. So we're not going to show the flashing of the Sonoff RF bridge. It's a 433 megahertz bridge that'll connect all of your wireless sensors that work on the 433 megahertz to MQTT with ease. Other setup methods will show how to do it with some JSON templates, but of course we're going to show how to do it with some rules to your own custom topics. Dr. Z's does a great video on how to flash the Sonoff RF bridge. I'll link that in the description of the video and you can just follow that to put Tasmodo on this and then you can jump back in and we'll show you how to set up the custom rules for each sensor. So now that you flash this with Tasmodo and have it hooked to MQTT, let's jump in the console and do some custom rules on this wireless sensor. A little shout out to CM Fly on Discord. He sent me the Sonoff bridge and a couple sensors so I could do some things and help out and support different people that are using the Sonoff bridge as I didn't have one and really didn't have any intention to get one but now I have one and it's actually I had this sensor on the freezer door which made it very simple being a wireless sensor on the freezer. So let's get this thing configured. So once you get the battery in it and hooked up you should be able to if you look at the console when you pull the sensor away you'll notice you get a result message from the Sonoff RF bridge and you'll get the message the RF received. Now this particular sensor does a code on open and a different code on close which is very important so you can see both of those actions. Now this particular sensor if you look at the data section right here you'll see it's 2BD30A and when we close it we'll get a very similar message 2BD30E which are very important and we'll write a simple rule to send a retained which is published to for that data so let's write that rule so what we'll do is we'll do rule 1 on RF received and make sure you spell receive correct as I didn't one time you do pound data equals and just to double check our message again we want to see we pull it away we want the a message so it's 2bd30a and do publish to the publish to means it's going to be a retained message so your open or close state will stay alive in your home assistant GUI during your reboots if you don't want a retain message then you'll just do the publish so my topic is going to be RF bridge slash sensor one and you can put this to whatever you like you don't have to use exactly what I did you know you could call it say front door or back door or whatnot now I'm gonna send over the message of in the payload of open of course you can change that you can do ones or zeros or a yes or a no and just have to make sure and configure that correctly in home assistant which we'll do in a second then we'll end the rule we need the second action so we need another rule which is on rf received pound data equals 2 b d 30 e well that one will do it do publish to RF bridge sensor one we'll call it closed and we'll end the rule and enter then we'll turn the rule on because we can see it says rule one off one one and that turns rule one on now when we watch the console we'll put the magnet close to the sensor and now you can see it runs this rule it performs close you'll see it post through MQTT RF bridge slash sensor one is closed and it even shows retained now when we open it again it shows open and now we go back it shows closed 
So what about if you have a sensor that only has one code when it's triggered? Typically you were using an automation in Home Assistant that would after like a few seconds would trigger it back and simulate that closed message or the off message. We're gonna do that in a rule in the actual bridge itself and make the bridge smarter. So what I have here is that water sensor, just have it connected up to constant power instead of battery powered. And I'm gonna simulate the water with just touching the two contacts. Of course, this would also apply to the one of the motion sensors I've seen will only do one message whenever it triggers. And it doesn't do a message when it stops triggering. So I'll put my finger across the contacts and you'll see in the console you get one message and that's it. So we get the one message. You can see in the data, it says FE0412. You can see I do it again. And you get that same message at FE0412. So if you did a rule like we did before on FE0412 for this water sensor and said, you know, trigger as detected, then it would just say detected water all the time. So let's do a rule and we'll simulate this as a motion sensor and we'll do motion on and motion off. So we'll just put this in rule two for now. You could append it to the one you did in rule one as long as you don't blow out the 511 characters. Let's do rule two on R F received data equals F E 0412. We'll do one little difference here is we'll do a backlog publish two. We'll do RF bridge again. And you can call this whatever topic you like. We'll do motion one and we'll post an on. So as soon as it gets the message, it will send a retained message to RF bridge motion one with a payload of on. Next, we have to have it start a rule timer of five seconds. And of course, you can change this to whatever time you like. We'll do rule timer one, five seconds, then end the rule. Next, we need another rule in the same rule buffer that when that five seconds is completed, we'll do on rules timer equals one, do publish two again for retained, RF bridge slash motion one with a payload of off and we'll end the rule. Just to go over that real quick is when it receives that one message from your motion or say for instance this water sensor it will do a retain publish to RF bridge motion one with a payload of on. It also sets the rule timer of five seconds. So then after five seconds later it will publish a retain message back to RF bridge motion one with a message of off. Push that rule in and we'll go to rule to one to turn that rule on. Let's test the rule by touching the probes on the water sensor. So you see the message, it sends motion one on, sets a timer for five seconds, and then it performs the publish two of the motion one off message. Give it a try again. There's your on, there's a the five seconds and then you get your off message. That's how you do a rule for a sensor that doesn't have, say, an open and close code or an on and off close code. You have to assume, though, that the sensor is going to go right back off once it's triggered. So a really easy way to do the rules, and you can do multiple rules, as we've shown in previous videos, don't have to do just two per rule. You have rule one, rule two, and rule, rule three. And don't think of those as rules themselves. Those are rule buffers, or as I've called them before, rule buckets. And you can put as many words or rules inside each buffer up to 511 characters. Now this particular rule, we have 378 left. So you can put plenty of rules inside one rule buffer. Just don't forget to turn your rule buffer back on when you're finished. So if you had more sensors, then you would just add additional ones and put in their unique codes and then post to their topics. Now let's quickly check out a binary sensor in Home Assistant for the rule we just did. So in your configuration YAML under the binary sensor section, 
you'll need to include, and I'll include this example in the description of the video for you to copy and paste and change. The state topic will be the one we posted to. So we can go back here. It's going to be RF bridge slash sensor one that we set it to. If you've changed the name, you'll change it to that as well. So the state topic will be RF bridge slash sensor one. We'll go ahead and put the availability topic to the last will and testament to the Sonoff RF bridge itself, which is going to be tele, which for telemetry, and then the MQTT topic name you chose, or you can copy one of the telemetry messages out and just change the last piece to LWT instead. Telemetry RF bridge one slash LWT for me, and the payloads for not available and available or online and offline. If you're not sure what yours is, if you just reboot the Sonoff RF bridge and check the console, you'll see the telemetry LWT. Now back to the rule, we chose open and closed as our payloads. As you can see here, when we did the rule, we chose open and closed and it's sending closed and open. So I pasted that in, into here as payload on, the doors open, payload off, the doors closed. Save your config, go to Home Assistant, General, we'll check config, and we'll restart. And depending on your GUI, you may have to, in your Lovelace or what GUI you're using, you may have to go add that entity to a card to see it. So I've just added this to one of this little sample cards. This is my little development piece of Home Assistant. We can see the freezer doors closed. Now if I pull the magnet away, it's just a reed switch in there, it'll open. And if you can see on the camera, and I'll put this in the dark, you can see the little red light will blink when it picks up a message. And now it's closed, and now it's open. And it's real simple to do to configure the Sonoff RF bridge with some rules, and you don't have to do any weird JSON templates or really mess with the codes too much. It's all right there in the Tasmodo console. And just do your rules, which you could also easily read those rules for MQTT in node red for all your various automations directly as well. So let's check out the trig board right quick. So the trig board is a battery powered ESP8266 with some deep sleep circuitry. I got it powered with a small lithium ion battery connected with just some jumper wires. They do have JST connections, but I didn't have time to get the JST connections in time for the video with the read switch. And I have just a standard read switch now one big difference over this is this is going to go over Wi-Fi instead of 433 megahertz. With the Wi-Fi signal, it's not as easy to spoof or fool the connection since it's directly over IP communications instead of 433 megahertz. I took Kevin's code and he had it going to a notification service and I used MQTT. Each time when I put the magnet next to the read switch, it publishes an MQTT message. I was only able to get one message, much like the water leak sensor I just showed. You're not going to get that open and close from what I found, and we would have to simulate that through some sort of automation with MQTT. Now, one difference, of course, you won't find in your 433 megahertz, is you've got all the programming pins at the bottom, so you can write whatever code you like to the chip. The GPIO pins are exposed on the side, so you could connect up other sensors, such as temperature sensors, motion sensors, etc., and use this as, say, some sort of weather gathering information because it does wake up every hour and would read your sensor and execute your code, and you could push that out to MQTT. On the other side, you can see the ESP chip, the reset button, and then there's a wake button if you want to manually wake it up along with the LED in between the two JST connectors. You also want to make sure that the battery you're connecting, the polarity is correct on the plug. I had to switch around the pins on the polarity of my plug. They were backwards from what the configuration that he's using. So check it out. It's a cool little solution using an ESP chip instead of 433 megahertz. And you can write your own code. Of course, you can expand this a lot more than you can your other sensors. And it would last probably a lot longer on the, the various size of lithium ion batteries. I'll leave a link in the description down to Kevin's page and it shows where to get the chip and he's got all the instructions on his wiki of the software and whatnot for the chip itself. So obviously 
This is a little more advanced to set up, but has more security since it's over Wi-Fi with encryption with your password. Has a lot more flexibility with GPIO pins as you could add in the temperature sensors or different various other sensors you'd like. Of course, this is already ready to go. A little easier package. A little different batteries, of course, use, but it does require the bridge. So it's kind of a little different and there's not as much security here on the 433 megahertz side. So it's pros and cons to both on which you want to go with wireless sensors. It's one of those things you just have to pick your poison, figure out what's the best solution for your home automation project. Thanks for watching this other little short video on wireless sensors. Make sure and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already and click the bell icon and y'all take care.